and welcome to another Spirit of Nature art video tutorial. And today we're going to be working on this small 7 by 5 inch canvas board which is a lovely way to start because it's not intimidating, it's a small space to fill. You can see I've got a lovely beautiful paper napkin here which I'm just taking the back two layers off so that I've just got the front layer here. And we're going to be using this to collage over this beautiful stencil here. So I'm just placing my butterfly napkin roughly where I want it to be and looking at where I'd like that stencil to be. And I'm using some washi tape just to blank out parts of the stencil that I don't want to get on my uh, canvas board because what I'm going to be doing in a moment is using some modeling paste to put through that stencil to create some texture and I don't want to be sticking my napkin over that texture because it will distort the picture. So I'm just seeing roughly where that butterfly is going to be and I'm just using washi tape to blank it out and now I'm just using a bit of washi tape just to attach that stencil in the right place. And here comes the modelling paste and my palette knife and I'm just going to take a small amount of that and just smooth it through that stencil creating that lovely texture. So when you're doing this you want to put enough of the modelling paste on to go through the stencil but not so much that it's standing above. You want to still be able to see that pattern through the stencil and just clearing off any excess there that I don't need. I've waited for it to dry before I go back and add the other section of modelling paste to that stencil because otherwise you'd see now if I went straight in and did that I would have squished the bit that was already there. So going back in now that that's dry with the rest of it. You can see that I probably should have cleaned my stencil first because that first bit of modelling paste has got a bit of pink dye in it but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be adding colour anyway. So I'm just taking a look at that butterfly and finding some distress spray stains to match the colours of that napkin and starting to use those sprays. I'm just taking the spray bit out of the bottle and using that to drip the ink on. This is Dusty Concord, I think I love this colour. Um, just putting it on that background there and spraying with water. I did, by the way, make sure that that texture paste was dry before I did this because if it wasn't then it would just all turn to mush. So starting to get those first layers of colour on uh, and in between those different colours I'm going to dry it because if I put all the wet colours on together I would just end up with them all mushing together and I would get a horrible brown colour. So I've got that dusty concord and a very small amount of um, shaded lilac uh, drying that and then going back in and layering. So going back in with some more shaded lilac there, adding a bit of water so I can move that around and then using my heat tool just to dry that off before I go back in and add some more and just keep repeating that process until I've got the intensity of the colour that I want. Again, another one of my favourite colours. Uh, same thing, adding some ink, putting some water on and then just moving that ink around until I start to find it's in the area that I want and then drying it in between each layer so that I can build up that intensity. I'm just checking in with that reference of that butterfly picture so I can make sure that I'm getting the ink into the right areas on that little canvas board. Little projects like this are perfect just to keep your creative juices flowing if you're feeling a little bit stuck. Small canvas like this is really easy to fill and I love finding paper napkins with images on that I want to use because again it's a really quick way to create something that's really effective.
me I always like a little bit of sparkle so I'm using some mica spray here and just giving that a good squirt over the color there and then drying it mica spray you can't really see the impact of mica spray until it's dry so wait until it's dry before you think about going in and adding more layers So now I want to add my napkin. I'm taking off any excess white and also just uh, any straight edges just to uh, make it disappear into the background as nicely as possible. I'm using a matte medium gel here and I'm just watering it down a bit because that napkin is pretty um, dainty. So I don't want anything that's too thick and gloopy. So I'm just painting some of that matte gel medium on to the board and placing the butterfly over the top. And then I'm gonna start painting over the top of that napkin with the matte gel. Kind of starting from the middle and working my way out just to make sure I minimize any air bubbles and any creases. Just folding that around the back, just more than anything to make my life a bit easier so it's not flapping about. I'll cut that later and as you can see as once that matte medium goes on that white part of the napkin starts to disappear and the background colors start to come out another little bit of butterfly from that napkin there that I'm just adding down in that bottom corner just kind of composition wise it completely disappears as I continue to add the layers of colors but uh, it does add uh, another layer of texture uh, and if you get close up you can start to see those extra little butterflies in there as well. Now I'm going to um, make those colours pop a little bit more using the same colours in Distress ink pads. So again, this is Peacock, peacock Feathers here. Uh, and I'm just going in with a really light touch here because what I want is for that deeper colour to, um, to go into the raised area of the texture from that stencil rather than on the background of the canvas. So I purposefully didn't put any gesso on the um, that layer. So once I had uh, put the text, the uh, modeling paste onto the canvas, I could have gessoed the whole thing to create a background that was completely the same. If I'd have done that, when I added the distress inks, you wouldn't have noticed the difference so much between the background and the texture because I've got two different textures there, the colors taken differently on them and it allows that texture to pop even more. So I'm just using those inks there just to add an, an extra depth of color to those areas. And now what I wanna do is add some highlights. So this is just some watered down gesso that I'm now just gonna take my little mini brayer and again, really light hand here, I'm just really lightly rolling that over the texture areas so that the raised areas start to pick up a little bit of that gesso. And it really is light touch here. It's about um, building up those layers really gradually. So I'm going in now with my finger because what I want to do is just, I'm really rubbing very, very lightly over the top so that the edges of that texture pick up the white gesso. So it just adds those highlights in and makes that pattern pop even more. It's almost like doing the gentlest of brass rubbings. to start to bring this whole piece together and edging any piece is a great way to start to see how the final piece is going to look and it's always something that I do if I'm feeling a little bit stuck about what should I do next um, so I've just again just used distress ink and used uh, I think chipped sapphire there just to start to frame it and I'm now going in with my white gel pen to add some highlights to that butterfly now that's nice and dry just to get that to pop out from the background a little bit more. And then I'm going in and doing the same on the little butterflies that are flying 
across that top corner, just adding in some highlights, again, just to help them pop and add a little bit more depth to them. And if we're adding highlights, we're gonna add some shading as well. So using my Intense pencils here, I'm just choosing the right shade of blue. So adding a little bit of water to my workbench there so that I can pick that up. Decided to go with the blue that's more turquoise to already match that peacock feather. And just choosing one side of that butterfly, drawing around it and then going in with my water brush just to blend that in. Again, the combination of highlights and shading just add the depth that help those little details to pop out. it's time to add our sentiment. And I love this stamp here, which says butterfly effect, a real reminder that the smallest, tiniest things that you do can have uh, an unexpected impact in a completely different area. So just stamping this onto a background that I had lying around from playing around with distress inks, uh, cutting that out and then distressing the edge of that card with my scissors. I've stamped using a waterproof ink so that I can uh, play around even more with those background colors if I want to without smudging that beautiful stamp. And just distressing it like this allows me to add some more color so that it helps it to pop off that canvas and really stand out. So here comes the Peacock Feather Distress Ink again, and we are gonna distress the edges even more. So where I've used the scissors there just to break up the outside of that card, I can now go in and really get some depth of that Peacock Feathers in there. So I'm gonna go around a couple of times because I want that color to be quite dark. And then I'm giving it a very quick spritz of water because Distress Ink is water reactive and giving it a little dab with a paper towel. So you just start to get that much more nice aged effect that you get using Distress Inks. And I'm going in with that same white pen to add some highlighting in to those letters just to bring them out of that background. to check where I want it to go, give it a little audition in some different places before I stick that down, just using some tacky glue. I like to use a cocktail stick so I don't end up with too much squishing out over to my canvas. And then an acrylic block on top and some heavy books just to make sure it sticks in place because of all that texture we've got. And just before we finish, just to add some highlighting, just to really help that stand out. So again, back in with that white gel pen and my water brush pen to just blend that highlighting into the background. And there we go, the finished product. Probably took me just over an hour, really nice, quick project just to get those creative juices flowing.